Hi, and welcome to 5-Minute Statistics for Clinical Research. My name is Caroline Herborn, and I am part of the Biostatistics team at GCP Service International. Decisions in clinical trials are often based on p-values obtained from hypothesis testing. In today's video, we want to explain what p-values show exactly and what is the difference to the error of the first kind. p-values show how large the probability is to obtain the observed test results assuming the null hypothesis is correct, or in other words, how likely it is that the data would have occurred by chance. The null hypothesis frequently states that there are no differences between groups, for example, and that the differences or relationships found are plainly due to chance. In clinical studies, usually an acceptable type 1 error of 5% is set as a threshold for the test decision. We discussed statistical errors in a previous video. A small p-value then indicates that it is very unlikely that the outcome would have been observed if the null hypothesis was true. In this case, the decision made would be in favor of the alternative hypothesis, which would be more likely to explain the observed data but it is important to mention that the p-value is only a measure for the null hypothesis and not for the alternative hypothesis. The p-value is also not showing the probability of the null hypothesis being true. It can only help in making conclusions about the probability of observing the data as it is, since the test is calculated assuming that the null hypothesis is correct. So a low p-value indicates that the data observed is very unlikely under the assumption that the null hypothesis is correct. It cannot distinguish if this outcome is due to the fact that the null hypothesis is actually true, but the random sample was not representative, or secondly, the null hypothesis is wrong. The p-value does not, however, reflect the probability of committing an error of the first kind. The chance that your conclusion is wrong is defined only by alpha. It defines the probability of wrongly rejecting the null hypothesis, independent of the p-value. This probability of being wrong is always given as the random population sample could only by chance be in favor of the alternative hypothesis. As explained in an earlier video, it is a calculated risk. Let's look at an example. We want to conduct a study where the efficacy of a new vaccine shall be investigated. We conduct a statistical test with a null hypothesis stating that there is no effect of the vaccine. The alpha is defined as 5%. If now we obtain a p-value of 0.035, for example, that is 3.5%, it means that there is enough evidence in this random sample to reject the null hypothesis. If the vaccine in fact would have no effect, then in this case the result would be due to a random sampling error. It does not mean, however, that there is a 3.5% chance that you are making a mistake. That error is still 5% here. So that is it for today. As you can see, the p-values provide a good measure of how likely it is to observe the data as is, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. It must be kept in mind though that it does only reflect the evidence in the data for the null hypothesis, and that the p-value is an entirely different value than the error of the first kind. If there are any additional questions, our team of statisticians is happy to help you out. Leave us a message at statistics at gcp-service.com or leave a comment below. If you are significantly satisfied with the content, make sure to subscribe to not miss the next video.